It was dark in the cave. Water dripped from the ceiling, and a thick layer of mud coated the floor. It was so deep that there was no light from the surface. No creatures lived that deep in the cave, and nothing grew. It was almost like being in the void of space, but there was still the noise of water echoing off the walls. The main tunnel that had led to the surface had caved in on itself, and the lower levels of the cave were completely isolated from the outside world. There had been people in the cave. They were young and adventurous, and enjoyed exploring the dark subterranean world. They would work themselves into tight spots where it was almost impossible to even breathe. They would descend down long drops that were coated in the same wet mud that covered the rest of the floor of the cave. They would try and explore every fissure, every nook, every crack, and every crevice of the cave. It was like some fantastic game and a thrilling adventure. They would stay down in the cave for days at a time and try to go deeper each time. Sometimes they would go swimming in underground pools, and other times they would climb one of the many high walls of the cave. The cave was large, though, and no matter how far and how deep they seemed to go, the cave always seemed to stretch just a little bit deeper. It was as if the cave had some big secret it wanted to keep hidden. The explorers had gone as far as the cave seemed willing to let them go, though. After the cave-in, the explorers had been locked out from the deepest depths of the cave. All of them had been barred from learning its final secrets, all except for Connor, who had ended up on the wrong side of the cave-in. He had taken a hard tumble into the darkness and fallen deeper into the cave than he had ever been. The fall had knocked him unconscious, and he lay in a deep sleep, unaware of what had just happened. He slept for a long time, and the only sound that broke the dark silence was the water dripping from the stalactites and the sound of his own breathing. The two sounds merged together to form a quiet melody that played for several hours. His friends began to regroup above the cave-in, and they searched for Connor in the darkness, but they were too far, and the barrier that separated them was too large. Connor couldn't hear them, and their search couldn't interrupt his slumber. Finally, after a long time, he awoke. It was dark, and at first he wondered if he was even awake. He managed to convince himself that he was conscious by listening to the steady dripping noise of the water. After he was sure that he was awake, he had a moment of panic, and he wondered if he was blind. His head hurt, and he wondered if he had hit it on the way down and lost his vision. It was only after frantically searching for his flashlight that he was able to confirm that his eyes still worked. As soon as he turned on his flashlight, he was blinded by its brightness. The instant after he turned on the lights, though, he saw something that sent shivers down his spine. It was only there for a moment, and then it was gone. But before it vanished, Connor could have sworn he saw the figure of a shadowy man standing in front of him. It scared him so badly that he dropped his flashlight. The light fell to the ground, and he stooped to pick it up and scan the cavern for the strange shadow he had seen. Hello? he called out. Is someone there? His voice echoed off the wall, and he heard his voice call back to him. Hello, someone here! He wondered if he had hit his head too hard. It was definitely his own voice being echoed back to him, but it sounded different somehow. He wondered if it had actually been one of his friends calling out to him through the darkness. Connor didn't know that he had been blocked off from the surface, or that his friends were on the other side of the cave-in. He could barely remember the cave-in, and it had all been too chaotic for him to have known who ended up above the collapsed tunnels and who didn't. As far as he knew, his friends could have been down in the depths of the cave with him, trying to find him. Maybe it was one of them that he had heard. He had been pretty sure that the voice he had heard was his own echo, but it sounded like a different tone and pitch than his voice when he had spoken, and the longer he thought about it, the less certain he became. He called out into the darkness again. Reed? Alex? Lisa? Wendy? Nancy? Are you guys here? Once again, he heard his echo coming back to him. It definitely didn't sound like one of his friends but it didn't really sound like him either. It spoke one word from the shadows. Here! He wondered if someone were playing a trick on him. Wendy, if that's you, it's not a funny joke. Cut it out! Once again, he heard the echo come back to him. Not a joke, it said. He wondered if he had just hit his head too hard. He felt the chill run down his spine. Is someone down here with me? Seriously, who are you? He asked. After a moment of silence, he heard some of his own words come back to him with a slightly different voice. Here with you. All right, Connor said, losing his patience. This is ridiculous. Show yourself. He waited a long time for an answer, but he figured his voice must have been swallowed by the cave because there was no echo. He stamped his foot in impatience. Look, whoever you are, I haven't got all day, he said. Are you going to show yourself, yes or no? Everything was silent for a long time again, and he thought that the cave had absorbed the sound of his voice again. But finally, an answer came back out of the darkness. No, his echo said back to him. It sounded almost completely different than his own voice. It almost sounded disappointed. 
Connor thought he was going insane, but he could feel in his guts that there was something going on in the cave that wasn't normal. An idea came into his head, and he knew it was crazy, but he had to try it. I'm losing my mind, he muttered. But he shouted out into the darkness. Are you my echo? Yes or no? His voice came back to him again, and it almost sounded ecstatic. Echo! Yes! He felt another chill run down his spine. Was he actually talking to his echo? Are you real? Yes or no? The voice came back to him again. He sounded skeptical, but his echo sounded excited. Real! Yes! He gasped and gripped his flashlight like he was trying to strangle it. Are you part of me? Yes or no? He asked in a panicked voice. He waited with bated breath for the voice to answer him. Finally, the voice called back to him. No! The voice said, and Connor felt his voice catch in his throat. His mouth grew dry and his breathing quickened. Was the voice real? Or were the words just the result of random chance? It had to be a coincidence. There was just no way that he was having a conversation with his echo. If the voice was telling the truth, it wasn't even his echo either. It was something else in the dark. He remembered the shadowy figure he had seen when he turned on his light. Had that figure been the thing that was talking to him? No, it wasn't possible. He must have hit his head, or maybe he was slowly suffocating. Maybe the cavern had sealed the air in with him and he was slowly breathing more and more CO2. He was delusional. It was all just one big hallucination. The voice wasn't real. But then again, what if it was? He had to know. He called out again to the darkness. If you're real, can you show yourself? He asked. He remembered that his echo couldn't answer without help, and he added, Yes or no? The echo was much faster responding to him this time. It sounded glum. No, it said shortly. Connor's eyes narrowed. Can't or won't? He asked. Can't, the echo said. It sounded almost heartbroken. But I saw a shadowy figure, Connor said in frustration. Are you telling me that wasn't you? There was a silence for a moment, and then the voice called out again, sounding frightened. Wasn't, it said, its voice trembling with fear. The answer left Connor confused. Either he was crazy, or he was having a conversation with a disembodied voice in a dark cave that could only repeat words that he had already said. Add to that the strange shadowy figure and the fear in the voice, and he felt like he couldn't tell what was real anymore. He began to wonder if he was already dying and the voice was just his mind making up some vision for him before he died. He felt like it was the most likely option, but something inside of him told him that what he was hearing was real. He felt like a lunatic, but he shook his head and kept talking with the voice. So you can't show yourself and you're not the shadowy figure, he said. Are you a ghost? Yes or no? No, the voice called back to him. It sounded like it thought he had said something dumb. So you're an echo, Connor said. Echo, the voice said excitedly. But you just said you're real, Connor said, growing more and more frustrated. Real, the voice said, responding in a happy tone. Connor sighed. Well, whatever you are, I'm stuck down here. Can you help me get out? Yes, no, maybe? The voice paused for a moment and finally said, Help, maybe? Connor sighed. Is that maybe because you don't know if you want to help me, or because you don't know the way out? There was a long silence, and Connor realized the voice wasn't answering him. He pinched the bridge of his nose. Is it something else? he asked, trying to think of a way to negotiate with the voice. Something else, the voice said excitedly. Well, what is it? Connor asked before chiding himself. What am I saying? You can't answer if I don't say it. Say it, the voice said in a subdued tone. Connor shrugged and offered a few guesses. Are you afraid to help me leave? Are you worried that the exit was sealed in the cave-in? Or is it that you don't know how to show me the way since you're just a voice? Don't know how to show you the way, the voice said, before adding in a bitter tone. Just a voice! Connor realized it was a sore subject for the voice, and he decided not to mention the fact that it didn't have a body. Instead, he turned to something more practical. Well, how about this, Connor said, recommending a plan to the voice. I'll shine my light in a direction and ask if I'm hot or cold. If I'm close, you can say hot. If I'm not, you can say cold. If I need more than that, I can ask things like up, down, left, or right. Let me know if that plan works for you. That plan works, the voice said excitedly. Connor let out a sigh of relief. He began asking the voice for directions, and it led him upwards, towards the upper chambers. Sometimes he would have to double back, but most of the time it was pretty easy going. Every now and then he would ask directions, and the voice would tell him something like up, down, in front, behind, or something like that. He felt like he was crazy. But the more he spoke with the voice, the more he realized that it was in fact real. It seemed like it could only echo his words, but it could still inflect and change the tone and even pitch in his voice. As they talked, he realized the voice wasn't even close to his own. It sounded almost like a woman, and he began to wonder how the voice had ended up at the bottom of the cave. 
As he walked with the boys, he almost forgot about the shadowy figure. He couldn't quite forget it, though. Every now and then, he would look over his shoulder and see the shadow following him. It kept its distance and left him alone, but he worried how long it would decide to watch him without doing anything. He kept climbing for a long time. Once he had to backtrack farther down into the chamber for almost fifty feet, it felt almost like someone had dropped a hammer on his spirits. But he climbed through the cave, following the voice as it echoed instructions back to him. He had no idea where he was, but he felt like he had been climbing for hours. Finally, after climbing to the top of a large ledge in the cave, he collapsed on the ground. He lay exhausted on the top of the ledge, sucking in air and clutching his side where a stitch had developed. He followed the beam of light from his headlamp and stared as it dissipated into the darkness. It felt like the shadows of the cave were swallowing the light. Normally, he didn't mind tight spaces, and he enjoyed searching out the hidden caverns. He felt a sense of accomplishment exploring places that no one else had ever seen before, and the dark, cramped sensation of the cave had never bothered him. As he looked at the beam of light, though, he suddenly understood why people were claustrophobic. The darkness was almost suffocating, and it was like his light was a lifeboat keeping him afloat in the darkness. He wondered about the shadow that had been following him, too. Was it real, or was he imagining it? And did it want to hurt him? Did it want to swallow him whole like the darkness did to his flashlight? What was it, and what did it want? How did it get down in the cave, and why did it look like a person? Did it follow him because it was hunting him? Or was it just lonely like his echo? He almost laughed at that thought. He was thinking about his echo like it was a real person, and not just a figment of his overactive imagination. He felt crazy just thinking about the shadow and the echo like they were actually real. Then again, his echo was leading him out of the cave, or at least he thought it was. It wasn't like he had any proof that he was any better off than when he started. Still, his echo didn't seem to hesitate when giving directions. It seemed to know exactly which way to go. Maybe he was getting even more lost. Maybe his mind was leading him in random directions, but Connor didn't feel like he was getting more lost. Even though he had no proof, he felt like he was actually getting closer to part of the cave that was familiar. He had no idea how he knew, but he knew deep in his gut that his echo was leading him out of the cave. It was that more than anything that worried him. If his echo was real, and it really was leading him out of the cave, then that meant that the shadow was at least as real as the echo. It hadn't done anything to make Connor think that it was dangerous, but he knew it was all the same. He knew it like he knew his echo was leading him out of the darkness. He let out an exhausted sigh. That's it, Connor said. I need a break. Need a break? The voice demanded. Yeah, you heard me. I need a break, Connor said. I've been climbing for hours, and it's not like we're in a rush. We're in a rush, the voice said in a mixture of anger and fear. As he listened to the voice, he became more convinced. He still couldn't see the voice, but he could picture in his mind a woman crossing her arms and stamping her foot on the ground. He pictured a frustrated expression on her face as her eyes darted from side to side. Well, look, Connor said, I'll be a lot faster if I can get a little rest. Don't worry, I'll be quick. Rest quick, the voice demanded. She sounded annoyed. He raised his hand in a mock surrender. I promise, he said. He reclined a bit and stretched his sore muscles. He shined his light down into the cabin below and saw the shadowy figure briefly before it vanished. What's his deal? Is he like a ghost or something? Something the voice said slowly, as if it was considering whether or not to talk about the shadow. Well, what is he? Connor asked, almost forgetting that she could only echo him. Is he a demon? A monster? A person? Maybe he's a walking nightmare. She paused before answering. A demon person? She said, unsure of herself. Walking nightmare. Well, that clears that up, Connor said sarcastically. Do you know what he wants? Yes or no? You, she said. Yes. He wants me? Connor asked though he really wasn't surprised. Figures. Well, does he want to kill me? Yes or no? Kill, she said fiercely, and Connor almost drew back from the voice. No. He doesn't want to kill me? Connor asked, confused. He doesn't, the voice said with a dark certainty. Connor thought for a long moment. He doesn't want me to become like him, does he? He does, the voice said slowly, as if she wanted to say more. It's worse than that, isn't it? Connor asked. Does it want me to become a part of him? It does the voice said, and a shiver ran down Connor's spine. I take it that it's not a pleasant experience, Connor asked. Not pleasant, the voice said. Nick wanted to know more, but he wasn't sure he would like the answers. Besides, the voice seemed to want to change the subject. So how long have you been down here, Connor asked. There's no way you've always lived down here. The voice didn't answer, so Connor continued. Come on, how long has it been, he asked. Days? Weeks? Years? Long, the voice said, but she sounded almost as if she were somewhere else. Years. 
What are we talking? Like, more or less than a decade? More, she said shortly. Okay, Connor said, ignoring the tone. More or less than a century? More, she said bitterly. He felt shocked. He felt like there was no way the voice could have been down in the cave for that long. He had thrown the number out as a crazy upper limit. More? He said, trying to hide his shock. He exhaled slowly through his mouth. Okay, more or less than a millennium. More, she said, and he couldn't contain his shock. You're telling me you've been down here alone for over a millennium? Alone, she snapped, and Connor immediately felt bad. But he couldn't wrap his mind around what she had said. His head was spinning. Who are you? He asked. I have no idea what's going on, but I am positive you aren't just my Echo. I am Echo, she said. She sounded like she was fighting back tears. Oh, Connor said. Your name is Echo. I remember reading about you. Name is Echo, she said, her voice full of sorrow. Despite herself, though, she sounded curious. Reading? Yeah, Connor said. You're the girl that was cursed to have to repeat whatever everyone else said. Then you ran off to live in valleys and caves. Live in caves, she said bitterly. I'm sorry, Echo, he said. I always thought that what happened to you was unfair. Unfair, she said, as if it was a cruel joke. Connor wanted to stay and comfort her, but he saw the shadow out of the corner of his eye. He turned to look at it and saw it was only a few feet away. He screamed and ran. Echo screamed too and ran with him. He called out for directions as he ran, and she shouted back. They ran down twisting branches of the caves, clambering quickly up walls and squeezing through tight spaces. He felt like his legs might give out when he heard voices above him. He almost shouted for joy, but he was too out of breath. He saw a light beam flash above him, and he looked for a way to reach it. He cast his eyes around the cavern frantically before they landed on a rock wall with enough handholds to climb. He was about to sprint towards it when he saw the shadow dart in front of him. It stood on all fours like a beast and it approached him menacingly. He knew it wouldn't be long before it consumed him. He sank to his knees and let out a defeated cry. No! he shouted as the shadow approached him. The monster was almost to him when he heard a cry from off to his left. No! He turned to see a woman running towards him in the shadow. She was beautiful, with long brown hair flowing freely behind her. She wore a white sleeveless dress with a golden cord around it, and she had soft brown sandals on her feet. She charged at the shadow and tackled it before it could reach Connor. He made eye contact with her, and she looked at him with sad but determined eyes. He felt tears stream down his face, but he ran and climbed towards the exit. The two of them wrestled each other, and their fighting shook the chamber. He knew it wouldn't be long before it collapsed. He climbed his way towards the hole in the ceiling and squirmed his way through. His friends helped him away from the hole just before the rocks came tumbling down from above, sealing the cavern shut. He was breathing hard and he grabbed onto his friends desperately. Reed helped him to his feet. Are you alright, Connor? he asked. It sounded like someone was down there with you. He stared at the rocks that covered the entrance to the cavern for a long time before he said anything. I was alone with my echo, he said and he felt a tear roll gently down his cheek. A week had passed since the cave-in. Connor refused to go caving again. He told his friends it was because of the cave-in, but he knew it was deeper than that. He didn't want to think about the shadow in the dark, and he certainly didn't want to think about her. He hadn't spoken to anyone all week unless he had to, and he had slept in his room with the lights on. Alex and Reed thought he was going through PTSD, and they urged him to seek out a psychiatrist, but they couldn't get him to leave their apartment. All his friends were sitting in the living room together, eating dinner. Connor hadn't joined them. He just wanted to sleep and forget ever having met her. He wanted to forget the cave. He wanted to forget the dark. And he wanted to forget her face. His friends did their best to keep him in good spirits, but they were worried. He didn't care. He would have stayed on his bed the whole night, but he heard a knock on their door. He rolled over and tried to sleep through the noise, but Alex entered his room. He poked his head in and looked at Connor. Hey, man, he said. There's a girl here. She was asking for you specifically. What? Connor asked. Yeah, man. You had done yourself, too, he said, making a circle with his thumb and his forefinger. She is gorgeous. Connor got up hesitantly and walked to the door. He wasn't sure what he expected, but he opened the door to see a woman dressed in a white sleeveless dress with a golden cord around her waist. She looked nervous, but she smiled as soon as she saw him. Hi, she said. He didn't wait for her to finish her sentence. He wrapped his arms around her and kissed her.